Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial, we'll be designing a clean and elegant looking wedding invitation in Photoshop. To do this, we'll be using a few freebies from the All Purpose Creatives Design Kit, including the Victoria Script typeface from Blessed Print and a beautiful floral illustration from Vector Hut. To bring it all together, we will place our invitation into a realistic mock up from Tabita's shop, courtesy of the Design Cuts Marketplace. So, if you're all ready to feel the love, then fire up Photoshop and let's begin. Let's start off by opening up the VP1 PSD, which is from the Peony Wedding Mockup from Tabita's shop. Now, you guys can check out the full bundle over in the Design Cuts Marketplace, and there is a link to that in the written portion of the design tutorial. So, let's go ahead and open that up to get started. Now, once you've opened the mockup, you'll see that you have a couple of layers here. But the one that we are the most concerned with right now is the second layer here, which is the smart object that says change card front. So let's go ahead and double click that to open it up. And we will now be inside of the smart object where we can begin to customize our invitation design. So to get started, let's go ahead and add a solid color adjustment layer. And for the fill color, we're going to enter the hex value F8F6F2, which is a little bit of an off-white cream color. Now, once you've done that, come up here to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. And then we're going to navigate to the Freebies folder and locate the Vector Hut subfolder where we will find the Rose illustration. So we're going to select Rose10.png and choose Place. And then once we do that, it's going to import our illustration into our document. But before we press Return to apply the changes and set it where it is, we're actually going to scale it up a little bit. So let's zoom out just a bit by pressing Command and the minus key. And now we're going to move our cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and hold the Alt option and Shift keys and scale this up from the center until it's about here. Now, once you're happy with the size and placement, go ahead and press Enter or Return on the keyboard to apply the changes. And then double click on the layer to open up the Layer Style dialog box. Now, once inside of here, we're going to apply a color overlay. And then let's change the fill color here to a nice shade of light pink. So for this, we're going to enter the hex value E5A4C0. Okay, and then go ahead and click OK and click OK once again. Now from here, we'll select that top Rose 10 Smart Object layer, hold the Shift key and select the Your Design Base layer, and press Command Control G to put it into a new group folder. Now, once you've put these layers inside of the folder here, we're going to double click this group one text and change the name of our folder to background. All right, now let's go ahead and go to the window menu and open up our character panel just to make sure that we have that readily available. And from here, we'll create a new layer. Press T on the keyboard to switch to our type tool. Click and then we will type out the name Alicia with a capital A. Press Command Control A to select all. Come over here to the character panel, and now we're going to change our typeface to the Victoria typeface from Blessed Print. Now this is a really nice and elegant looking script font that you guys will get in the full bundle. Now for this we're going to be using BP Victoria Regular. Okay, and then for the fill color here, let's go ahead and click on color, and we can change that to 224171, which is this nice shade of a muted blue color, sort of a navy blue. Go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that at the moment, all of our letters are uppercase. So over here in the character panel, you'll see that we have these two uppercase T's highlighted. So let's just click on that to deselect it and now make everything upper and lowercase. Now, you can open up the glyphs panel here under the window menu. And what this is going to do is show us all of the alternate characters that we have available for this font. And the nice thing about it is, all we have to do now is select one of these letters, and you'll kind of get a preview of the alternates here. Now we're going to select this second alternate, and if you come over here to the Glyphs panel, you can also see where that is selected. Now I'm going to click to highlight this entire name here, and then go ahead and change the size to about 69.7 or you can just round it up to about 70 point. Now go ahead and click in there again two or three times to highlight the entire word. Change the tracking setting to zero to bring those letters closer together. 
Okay, and then you can do the same thing for the A at the end. If you want to select that, you can choose some of these other alternate characters. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now, let's just go ahead and maybe move this down and try and center it a little bit. So all I'm doing here is holding the shift and the down key, and then maybe I'll tap it over to the left a little bit as well. Now press command Control j to duplicate it, then Command and the left bracket to move that copy down. Press command Control t to do a free transform. Click and hold the Shift key and then slide it down. Press Return to apply the changes, and then press T to get your type tool. Click inside, and now let's change this to say Vince. All right, so we're going to type out our second name here. Move it down by holding the shift key and tapping the down arrow. And then press T to get your type tool. Select and highlight that first uppercase V there. And then let's change it to the first alternate character here, which again, you can see over here in your glyphs panel. Okay, so I'm just going to select this V, but I encourage you guys to play around with this and choose some of these other interesting alternate characters. Now we can do the same thing for the E on the end here, but I'm kind of liking the way that one is looking. Okay, and then we can leave our other settings the same. All right, so I'm going to leave the color the same, the size the same, and then maybe just tap this over and to the right a bit. All right, now I'm going to create another new layer. Press T, click, and then this time I'll type out the word AND in all lowercase letters. Now again, you can choose some of these other alternates just to see how it looks, and I'm actually liking the look of that first one because it flows nicely into that curve or that hook on the left side of the letter N. Okay, so now I'll click two or three times here to select the entire word, and from here I'm going to change the size to about 21 and a half, maybe 21 and a half point. Leave the color the same, and we can make it a little bit bigger. Let's go to 22 point. Okay, press command Control t to do a free transform. And then what we want to do is place this word in between the two names. All right, so somewhere about here, maybe we can zoom in a little bit to get a better look. I'm going to close the glyphs panel for a moment. And then we can just tap the names apart a little bit, just to give a little bit of breathing room to the word and in between, that nice catch word there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and press the letter U on the keyboard. And that's going to switch us over to the rectangle tool. Now up here in the toolbar, we want to go ahead and click on the stroke color and choose none, or that white box with the red stroke through it. Click on fill, and now let's select our same blue color, which happens to be 224171. Now once you've done that, all we're going to do is click and drag a medium to short length thin rectangle. Okay, and you can zoom in here if you want to be able to maybe make it a little bit thinner. All right, I'm just pressing command Control t to do a free transform, and then clicking and dragging to make that a little thinner. Now it's a little bit too thin. Kind of want somewhere in between those two. All right, something about that looks pretty good, something about that width. All right, and then let's go ahead and double click on the word and. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of an outer stroke here because I want that word to appear a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna apply a one pixel stroke with a position of outside and use that same fill color 224171. Go ahead and click OK or press return twice to apply the changes. And from here what I'm going to do is select that rectangle, press command Control J, and then hold the shift key and the left arrow to move this copy to the opposite side. Alright, now I can select both of those rectangle layers together and position them around the word AND. All right, and you may want to readjust some of your other text positioning just a little bit. I'm just going to move the names around a bit. Then once you're happy with the size and positioning of everything, select the top text layer, hold the shift key and select the text layer just above your background folder and press command control G to put them into a folder of their own. Double click the group one text and change this to say names. All right, now I'm going to move that up together all as one group create another new layer, press T to get your type tool, and now I'm going to click. And you may notice that we may select the name by accident, so if that happens, you're just going to want to you know, click a little bit lower and try and create your text layer sort of separate from the other text. 
And then what we're going to do is go ahead and change the typeface. Now for this, I'm going to use a sans serif condensed typeface. Um, for this, I'll be using acumen variable condensed in the regular condensed type. Okay, but I'm going to also make it about nine point in size with a tracking setting of about 200. And I'll use that same blue fill color and also make it all caps. Now what I'm going to do is type out request your presence, press return to create a new line, and then say at their wedding. Now press command control A to select all, then command control shift and C to center the text, click on the move tool, and then we're going to place this just underneath and sort of centered below the name Vince. Now once you've done that, press command control J to duplicate the layer, hold the shift key and tap the down arrow or just hold the down arrow to slide this down to the bottom. Now press T to get your type tool, click inside and press command control A to select all. And now we'll go ahead and put in the venue. So I'm going to type out Ocean View Hotel, press return and type San Diego, hold the Alt Option key and press the number eight on the keyboard to get this bullet. And then we're gonna type out California. Okay, so your text should still be centered and just below on the bottom here, underneath everything else. All right, now let's go ahead and create another new text layer. Press T. All right, and this time we're going to type out the word Sunday in upper and lower case. Now you can't tell right away because we need to go ahead and check off this double capital T here so that you guys can see it's upper and lower. And now we're going to go back to our Victoria typeface in regular style here. And for this, I'll go ahead and make the size about 17.15 point. All right, and we're gonna use the same fill color here, but let's change the tracking setting back to zero. Okay, and now we're just gonna slide this over here a little bit maybe double click on the layer and let's go ahead and add a one pixel stroke to this as well just to make it a little bit bolder and you can leave the color set to 224171. Okay and now you'll see you have a little bit of a stroke around it which just makes that typeface a little bit more bold and heavy and easier to read. Okay so once you've done that select the layer and press command control J to duplicate it. Hold the shift key and the right arrow to slide it over towards the right and then press T to get your type tool, click inside two or three times, and change this to say November. Okay, now we're gonna tap that over a little bit as well. And then once we've done that, press Command Control J to duplicate the layer, hold the Shift key and the left arrow to slide this in between, press T to get your type tool, click inside and type the number eight. Now let's go ahead and highlight that number eight, and we're going to change the size of this layer to about 46.4 point. All right, so we want the number to be larger than the day and the month. And then we're just gonna tap it down so that it's sort of in between these two layers. Okay, so we're gonna tap it over, select the November text, and maybe tap this over while holding the Shift key as well. Okay, and now we can select all three of these text layers and try and center them, move them up a little bit, just below request your presence at their wedding. Okay, and now we can hold the command control key, select that text layer above it that says request your presence at their wedding, hold the shift key and tap the down arrow a couple of times, so it's about there. And now let's go ahead and select the Ocean View Hotel, San Diego, California text layer, press command control plus J to duplicate it, and then hold the shift key and the up arrow to slide this copy up. Press T to get your type tool and click inside and press command control A to select all and then just type out the year 2019. Okay, now for this, we wanna slide this just underneath the eight here so that it's centered. And now what we're going to do is create another new text layer. So let's give ourselves a little bit of room by selecting that Ocean View Hotel, holding the shift key and tapping down a few times, press Command Control plus J to duplicate it, hold shift and the up arrow to move it up, press T to get your type tool, click inside and press Command Control A to select all, and now we're going to type out five o'clock in the evening. Press command control A to select the entire line of text. And now I'm going to use a nice slab serif font. So I'm going to use Emmy slab regular. 
Now, if you guys don't have this font, you can use a font like Rockwell or any kind of secondary or tertiary typeface that you would like to use here. I happen to think that the slab serif is sort of a nice complement to the script and the condensed sans serif font, so I leave that entirely up to you guys because this is really the only time that we are using it. Now for this font, let's go ahead and make it about 9.5 for the size. And we want to use the same fill color and the tracking is set to 200. Okay, now I'm just going to tap that down a little bit, move the ocean view text up a bit. All right, and now let's go ahead and center all of this. So we're going to move the ocean view text to the bottom in the order in which it appears, place the five o'clock just above that. Okay, and then we have 2019, We've got the number eight, right? The Sunday and the November. So I'm really just reordering these layers here, okay? So that they make sense. And now what I'm going to do is select the request your presence at their wedding text, hold the command control key, select the number eight, the 2019, the five o'clock in the evening, and then the ocean view text. And I'm gonna come up here to the top toolbar and choose align horizontal centers. And that's just gonna align everything nice and centered. So once I've done that, I can see that I now need to tap that November text over to the right a little bit, select my Sunday text, and maybe tap it to the right as well. And that's looking pretty good. So now I'll go ahead and select that top text layer, hold the Shift key, select the bottom text layer just above the Names Group folder, press Command Control G to put it into a folder of its own, double click the Group 1 text, and rename this Time and Date. Okay, and then just place that below the names. So we now have all of our text layers here. Okay, and if you want to, maybe just move the names down a little bit more, just so that everything can feel a bit more connected. And then once you're happy with the size and placement of everything, let's go ahead and press Command Control S. Now all we're doing now is saving this smart object so that we can update our main mockup file. So once this is complete, press Command Control W to close the window, and you can now return to your mockup and see how everything is looking and this nice invitation here. So from here, what we're going to do is select the back card layer, double click on the color, and let's go ahead and change the color of this back card to the hex value EC82AA, which is this nice shade of pink. Go ahead and click OK, and that now completes our nice looking elegant invitation design. So for this tutorial, we have used a very beautiful typeface, the Victoria script from Blessed Print, along with just one of many beautiful floral illustrations from Vector Hut. And these are all part of the all-purpose Creatives Design Kit, which you guys can get now that'll help jumpstart any of your design projects and give you the inspiration that you need to jump right in and create some awesome looking work. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial today, and hopefully you've learned a few new tips and tricks along the way. As always, we would love to see what you guys do with these techniques and with these elements in your own work, so please go ahead and share that with us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.